If there's one thing we programmers are good at, it's removing repetition from our work. I bet we can all think of a couple of times that we have spent more time automating a solution than we would have spent just doing it in the first place. Now, I'm a huge fan of automation, and one place where this has really come in clutch for me many, many times is using the command line to automate code migrations. I think we've all been in a scenario where we have a large code base, and there's some kind of change that you need to make across the code base. Maybe you're removing a particular pattern or switching to a new pattern. Sometimes editors have the right tool is built in, but sometimes you have to go file by file and make those changes. Or you can learn a few command line tricks and have it done in just a couple of minutes. And I'm going to show you in this video how I use sed on the command line to make these types of changes really, really simple. So I mentioned that we're going to be using sed. However, if you're on Mac OS like I am, the version of sed that you have isn't quite the best one out there. What you really want is gsed or GNU sed which you can install, of course, by doing brew install gsed. Another tool that we'll be using here is the Silver Searcher, or AG. Now, you may be familiar with grep, which is the main tool for grepping through files that comes built in on most systems, or maybe you're familiar with RG, which is rip grep. And these all can do kind of the same thing. They look for patterns within code. So what is it that we want to do? Well, we're in a little project that I've been playing around with here, a place where I'm learning how to use iterators and async iterators and generators in JavaScript. Now, something I've done in this project that for the purposes of this video I'm going to undo is alias the async iterable type to just the letter I. And what I'd like to do is undo this alias. Really, it just makes things less obvious in all of these places. My editor here does support renaming this type. However, instead, let's do this from the command line. So we're here in the source directory, and this is a pretty small project. I just have three files right now. But imagine this is a much bigger project where it would take me quite a while to go through and manually change that in every single file. What I want to do instead is find the files I want to make this change in, and then use sed on the command line to make that change. To find that file, I can grep for the pattern that I want. And in this case, this is the pattern. What I can also do instead is do dash L to just list the files that have this pattern. And this is important because in a big project, you don't want to have to go through every single file. You want to hit the files that you know have the pattern that you want to change. So finding the right file list is the first important step. Now, the next thing we want to do is pipe this file list into sed. Now, we can't go directly to sed because we need to pass this file name as an argument at the end of sed. So what I typically do is a while loop. And we could also use xargs. We'll do a while loop first, just so it's a little clearer what's going on. If you're not familiar with the syntax of while loop in bash, this is what you're looking at. So we've got while. Our condition here is while we can read a new line from our input. And each line, we're going to call file. Between do and done, this is our block. And right now, we're just going to echo file. And just to show you that we are doing something different, I could go ahead and make some extra characters in this string here, and we can see those are being printed out. Now, instead of actually just printing out these files one at a time, what I want to do is pass them to set. Often when I'm setting this up, I'll keep the echo in here. As I'm setting up my command, I can hit enter and almost get like a dry run. I don't actually get a dry run and like run set and see what the output would be, but I can get a picture of what each one of the individual commands that I would run is going to look like. So what do we want to do with sed? Well, sed is a very general stream editor. That's what sed stands for, stream s ed editor, stream editor. And what this essentially means is you can pipe files or content to it, and then you can give it commands that you can edit that content with. You can print, you can cut particular lines. In our case, we're going to do substitutions. We pass a string command here to sed, and the first character is s, which means we want to do substitutions. Now, after the s, we have to use some delimiter character to represent the different parts of this command. And conventionally, that would be a backslash, but it doesn't have to be. You can actually use pretty much any character you want. And the reason you might not choose to use a backslash is maybe a backslash is one of the characters that you want to replace. For example, maybe you are changing some file import paths. And so instead of using a backslash, maybe you would want to use a pipe character. So after the backslash, because we're doing a substitution, then we need to pass two, possibly three arguments, if you will, to this substitution. The first one, of course, is the pattern that we want to replace. And we're going to do something simple here. I, and then we will have our angle brackets with our generic T in there. We can use another backslash to represent the end of that argument, the beginning of the next one. And we can say we want to replace this with async iterable T. And then finally, we can do one more backslash, and these would be the flags that we could pass at the end, similar to the flags that you might have, say, in a regular expression. I'm going to use G to say, do this globally, so don't only match the first one you find on a particular line, match them all. If we hit enter, we can see this is what the command would look like. Remember, we still have this echo in here, and so we're not running the command, we're just printing it out. We have G said, we have our substitution command here, and then we have our file name. If I take out echo, what you'll see is we get a lot of content printed out to the 
terminal here. In fact, it looks like the whole file is being printed out. But notice something, we have async iterable. Because said is a stream editor, what it has done is it's taken that file content, but it's output the replacement content, the new file content that it has created, it's output that to standard out instead of back to the files. So what we have to do is add an extra flag here. We have to say dash I, meaning we want to edit these files in place. If you didn't install GSED and you're just using Mac OS said, what you're going to have to do is pass another string to I. I takes its own string argument. This particular string argument to I represents the new file extension for backup versions of this file. And what this should do is edit the existing file, but create a backup version of the old file. So if we take a look here, you can see what's happened. We've modified async and sync, but we have some untracked files here. If you don't want a backup file and you're using said and not gsed, you can just pass an empty string and it will recognize no file extension. So we're just going to edit the existing files in place. And if you're working in a Git repository, that's good enough. You'll be able to see the diff and choose what you want to do and can undo that if you need to. I really recommend either creating this backup or even more preferably to me, do this in a Git repository because then you can actually see the changes. They're easy to undo and you can run your said command as many times as you want. Often you may not know the exact patterns that you're looking for, or you may find edge cases as you go through this. And so I think about it as a pretty iterative process. I'll try a substitution, see a few edge cases that I missed, tweak my command, do it repeatedly. And usually that is still much less time than it would be to go through file by file and make those changes. If you're using G said, you can still use dash I, but if you don't pass it an argument, it knows to edit the files in place and not create a copy. And if we look at the diff, you can see this is looking good. We can see where we once had I angle brackets T, we now have async iterable angle brackets T. Now, sometimes what you want to replace is not always a continuous string like this, where we have I angle brackets T. I'm going to go ahead and commit these files to my repo. However, what we could find is other references in these files to I angle brackets, some other generic argument. Let's go back to that command and see what we could change here. Well, first of all, we're not going to find I angle brackets T here. So instead, let's just do a find in this directory. And instead of doing T, what we can do is a capture group here. Now, unfortunately, we have to do a lot of escapes here. So we have to escape both parentheses in the capture group. Then in our case, we're going to do backslash W to capture any word characters. And then we're going to have to do backslash plus to capture one or more of those word characters. Instead of replacing those with T, we can replace those with slash one. Backslash one will represent the first capture group. And that is the only capture group. Let's go ahead and run that. And oh, take a look at that. We found 17 use cases that were not I angle brackets T. And if we take a look at the diff, we can see that we've successfully captured T1 to four, T1 to three in my zip function here. So as you can see, we've successfully found and translated more versions of this pattern that we're looking to get rid of. Now, one thing I want to point out is that said is primarily a line based editor, which means if you have patterns that span across multiple lines, it's kind of challenging to use said to find and replace those. However, there is kind of a clever workaround for this. Let's go ahead and find all of the files in this project again. This time I'm going to use exargs instead of a while loop. The main difference with exargs is that it automatically applies the arguments at the end for you. So that we don't have to use the dollar sign file variable to manually do that. Also, it will probably run all of these in a single command instead of one by one, which may have a bit of a performance difference. But let's go ahead and do G said dash I. And we're also going to do dash Z in this case. Now, what does dash Z do? Well, let's open the main file for G said and look for dash Z or dash Z. This is a flag to separate lines by null characters. Now, most code files that you're working with probably don't have null characters in them, which means that it will treat the entire file as if it is a single unit, not that it's a single line. You would still have to match for white space and stuff like that, but you can use this to match across multiple lines. Now, what I do with dash Z is not to try and find that pattern across multiple lines. You could do that. That could be kind of challenging too, but what you can do is replace all of the new lines characters in your file with nothing or remove them, I guess. So what we can do is say S, we're going to do our substitution. Maybe let's use a pipe character this time, backslash N to represent our new line. And we're going to replace that with nothing and do it globally. And oops, I said Z args, let's say X args. Now notice that we've removed a lot of lines, but we have only added three lines, which makes sense because we have three files here. If I open one of these, this entire file is now a single line. Now, 
If there's a pattern that spans multiple lines, it should be easier to find that pattern as a single line, right? You can look across that one line. You don't have to worry about new line characters, but you can do your replace across multiple lines, which have now become a single line. Now, once your replace is done, you can do whatever you want to format that. I have a package.json file set up here, and I have a format command that just does a prettier write to all of my files. So I can go ahead and run yarn format. Now my files are back in shape. So those are some tools and practices that I find really helpful when trying to do code migrations across large code bases using command line tools. One thing to keep in mind is that these types of command line tools can make it really easy for you to write a script and even commit scripts to your repository that make these types of changes. So it's very easy for you to share these with other people on your team, or if there's some type of migration that you have to do frequently, these tools make it very easy to encapsulate that behavior so that you don't have to do that manually. If there are other command line tools that you guys like to use for code migrations or similar patterns, definitely let us know about those in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.